I met somebody new today. His name is Jonathan Hall. He owns a touring company, an expat touring company. He actually owns two companies. He has one is for expat tours, or it's actually called Ecuador Expat Journeys. Okay, there's a link to the website in the description. And he also has a, a birding company, a touring company called Ecuador Birding Journeys. Okay. Both of these websites I'm going to put in the description. I talked to Jonathan this morning at pretty good length about his company and what the services are that he offers. He does tours of Ecuador. He's been here over 20 years. Well, he's actually born and raised here, but he's been doing this touring, providing tours, guided bus tours of all of Ecuador for over 20 years. People from all over the world come here and go on his tours. So I'm going to share the interview that I did with him this morning, as soon as I come back in a minute. And please, look at his website and go through the FAQ section, okay? It's, the website's very easy to navigate, and there's a lot of useful information that we may not have picked up during this interview. I kind of went through the website. It's very well put together. The information is easy to read. And, but I encourage you, after you watch this interview, go look at the FAQs on this website because there's some very useful information about costs and cancellation policies and all this kind of stuff. Everything, pertinent information that you really need to know about. Okay, we'll get started on the interview right after this. Hey. Hello there. So I'm sitting here in this beautiful condo here at Los Olas here in Monta, and I'm talking to Jonathan Hall. And what is the name of your business? I can see it on your shirt. Okay. But yes. Ecuador. Um, so Ecuador Expat Journeys. Okay. Uh -huh. right. What do you do? Um, well, I, I've been working in tourism for 24, 25 years. And about 12 years ago, I realized that there are lots of people moving down to Ecuador, mm -hmm. not knowing very much about Ecuador. So we decided to design this tour, which we call the Ecuador Expats mm -hmm. uh, Journeys. We, and our tour is called uh, a crash course. A crash course. course. Yeah. Crash course. Because uh, the idea is to see as much as possible. Um, and then in the future, if you want to come back down, you know where to go. So we see as much as possible in a 10 day period. In a 10 day period. Yeah. So when let's just create a scenario, all right? People are coming from Mesa, Arizona, a couple. Okay. They come down here, they've hired you, they want to see Ecuador. Where do they meet up with you in the first place? Well, we will start in Quito. Quito. Yeah. And the idea is to visit all the, all, all the hot spots where okay. a lot of expats have chosen to live. So we start in Quito. We do a, a little bit of Spanish classes in Quito, get a feel for the country, we have guest speakers come in, talk about current events. Um, and then we head north to Cotacachi. Okay. So in Cotacachi, there's also a good population of expats that want to live in the highlands, but not in a large city like Cuenca. Mm -hmm. So we'll spend a couple of days there. And from there, we head down to the coast seeing um, pretty much the coastline from Manta all the way down to Salinas. Oh, and my. then obviously the most popular spot that most people think is the most popular spot is Cuenca. Cuenca, yeah. Uh -huh. I tell people all the time, you, you, if you come to visit Ecuador, you have to at least go visit Cuenca. Right. Uh, especially if you're not a beach person, don't want to be on the beach, you want to be in the Andes, go to Cuenca. So, so it's a 10 day, you say it's a 10 day tour? 10 days and then we have a four day extension to okay. the, further south to see the, the areas of Loja and Vilcabamba. Okay. Vilcabamba. Okay. Bil Known as the Valley of Longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Because people live so forever. <laughs> they say up to 120 years old. Oh my. It's not the water. I wonder what the secret is. I wonder how, why? Well, it's in that I area. think the secret is just getting up early with the, with the roosters working and then going to bed okay. um, early. Just okay. eating, eating healthy and working. That's what they say. Okay, so now when you start a tour, when people come here, and what do you travel in? Do you have a, a big a van? Um, or, or? We, have, um, we have a bus. bus. It depends on the size of the group. Um, right now we have a group of 12 people, so we're in a smaller 20-person bus. Okay. Um, if it's a bigger group, we have a 35, 40-person bus. The idea is to be comfortable. Um, okay. 
the idea is to have fun, see as much as we can, but comfortable. So we always have space on the bus. Sure, sure. Who does the driving? Um, I have a couple of main drivers. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have my main drivers are Ray and Vladdy. Okay. So when you get to these different destinations, like say Kodakashi, mm -hmm. you I, I, I assume you've already prearranged a place for everybody to stay the night. And yeah. That's all part of the package. Yes. So okay. on our tour, it includes all the hotel lodging. Okay. And virtually at every single spot that we stop, we have uh, we have a gathering with expats that already live in um, in the town. Mm -hmm. So we'll have maybe an hour where people just sit and mingle, talk. We might have a, a drink or some empanadas, and they can ask questions. That way, they're getting the answers from people who have already done the tour or mm -hmm. not the tour, but have moved to Ecuador. Right. So um, they're going to have unbiased. They can ask, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly of living in Ecuador or moving to Ecuador. Because mm -hmm. um, Ecuador is great, but obviously every town is going to have maybe something that people don't like. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So let's talk about the safety factor, if you don't mind. We can't have a conversation about Ecuador if we don't talk about safety at some point. How do you, how, how do you answer that question to people when they say, is it going to be safe for us to be traveling okay. up and down these highways here? How, how do you answer that? To be honest, I've never been asked that question, uh -huh. and I've never really thought about it. Obviously, I'm aware of what's going on. I'm going to avoid any neighborhoods that maybe we shouldn't be in, or if there's anything happening during that time period that we're traveling, uh, we'll avoid a spot. Okay. But... Um, Ecuador is such a safe country. I've been traveling, like I said, I've been working in this for over 20 years. I've never had any problems. Um, and obviously it's a concern. Sure. Because I'm responsible for everybody, but um, we haven't had any problems. Were you doing a tour during the Nepal? Again, I'm a very lucky person. Luck <laughs> follows me, the sun follows, but I never see rain. Yeah. Um, I've We've always managed to finish our tours before Aparo. Okay. Yeah. Right. We've never had to cancel a tour ever. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So I have my contacts. The, yeah, yeah. And, and that helps. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. It's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about Salinas because, and the reason why I ask is because I've done a lot of research, on, especially on coastal living in this general area, Monta and a couple of hours north, a couple of hours south. But I don't know anything about Salinas. I heard you mention that you go to Salinas. We do, yes. Um, did you spend the night there? Or? We spent the night there, yes. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, um, I've heard it's a real, real party city. Is, is that true, or um, what do you think, John? Well, Salinas for Ecuadorians is definitely the party city. Uh, mm -hmm. People from Guayaquil, most of the wealthy people from Guayaquil, or even middle class, will have condos um, on Salinas Beach. Mm -hmm. um, the nickname of Salinas is the Miami Beach of Ecuador. Okay. So it can be a party place, but generally on weekends and definitely holidays. Holidays, most of the expats that live there, and there is a large population there. I would say it's the largest population of expats on the coast, more than Manta. Um, so lots of condos. Again, most of the condos are owned by people from Guayaquil, and they're only there maybe four or five times a year. Not so sure. the rest of the year, the Salinas is a you no. Know, Hawaii Beach Town, especially during the week, you'll have the whole beach to yourself, oh all the restaurants to yourself. But again, like on a holiday weekend, my expats that I know, they'll go shopping and then just close the door for four days and stay, they know that they're gonna have, yeah. yeah, they know they're gonna have um, noise and dancing all night long. So mm. they, expats might just organize the, um, um, their own games, getaway. Yeah, yeah. games yeah. and. Yeah. Now, do you go to Waikil? We drive, part through, of the tour. we drive through Guayaquil just because it's uh, the largest city in Ecuador yeah. and um, they do have a U.S. consulate there. Yeah. So people that live in Salinas or Cuenca or Loja might find it easier to go to Guayaquil versus Quito. Mm -hmm. Also, Guayaquil has a large international airport and a lot of times the flights are cheaper into Guayaquil. So the idea is to drive through Guayaquil. We'll do a, a quick stop just so people get a feel for it because um, Guayaquil can be very intimidating. But yeah. going through there, we can show them that Guayaquil is actually a beautiful city. And so that way, next time, if they have to come on their own, they'll know, okay, Guayaquil, this, is, this mm -hmm. area is safe. Um, so, and I think most people appreciate going through Guayaquil and lots say, oh, I wish we could spend more time. Yeah. There's yeah. more important things to see. So when you leave Guayaquil, where do you go from there? Well, from there, we have a really exciting drive. We go up to Cuenca, which is, mm -hmm. again, um, we're talking day, 
generally 9, 10. Mm -hmm. So people have been seeing the coast and really excited. They've seen Cotacachi, but their goal, most of them is Cuenca. Yeah. So as we're driving over the pass, we drive through the Cajas National Park. It's um, roughly in about an hour and a half. We drive from sea level up to about 14,000 feet. So it's a spectacular drive. Yes. And then from there, we start dropping down into, into Cuenca. You can start seeing people's eyes start sparkling because yeah. so, they've been waiting so long, maybe years, to see Cuenca. Yeah. So that's always an exciting day, driving yeah. down that hill into Cuenca. Oh, man. Do you go toward the Amazon? On any of your tours? Um, not the expat tours. Okay. But again, I have my own travel agency, um, Eckler, mm -hmm. Eckler Journeys. Okay. So I've been doing trips to Galapagos, the Amazon, for 20 plus years. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the average, what is the average size of a tour when you're taking, like how many people do you have on the tour that you're doing right now? Right now we have 12 people. Okay. Um, before the pandemic, we were probably doing, we're doing about six to eight tours, averaging 25 to 30. Um, after the pandemic, um, our groups have been a lot smaller. I'd say our largest group has been probably about 15. So mm -hmm. I'd say our average is 8 to 15 right now. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Uh, you feel like talking about cost? The cost of the tour? Yeah. Of course. Um, let's see if I remember the cost of the tour. Okay. <laughs> um, I think for the 10 days, I think it's 2600 for for a couple. Mm -hmm. And I think it's... 1800 for a single, so that'd be a private room. Is um, that all inclusive? All, all inclusive, it does not include um, dinners. Okay. It includes a handful of lunches, but then the rest of it's included. Okay. Um, obviously not flights from North America or sure. Europe. Um, we haven't changed our costs for probably four or five years now. Okay, yeah. all right. So how do people book a tour? Well, you can go onto our webpage, mm -hmm. which again would be eclorexpatjourneys.com. Yeah, which um, I'll put in the description. Okay, yeah. So. That's how most most people book through there. Uh, we have lots of word of mouth. I'd say probably 80% of our business is coming from word of mouth. Wow. On all our tours, even include, including the one today, um, virtually all the tours, we have people doing it for the second time. And we've had, we've had maybe five or six people do it three or four times. Wow. Yeah. So how many tours do you do per year? For the expat tours, we're doing, right now, we're doing about six. Oh, six, okay. Uh -huh. So if anybody wants to book, they, I, I assume your website announces when the next tour is available yeah. and how much it's going to cost. And yes. Booking, and then, of course, everybody needs to arrange their own flights. In and out, right? Correct. Okay. We can help you if, if necessary, but um, sure. most people will use their miles or find mm -hmm. a good deal. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And so, the and I think you already answered this question once, but it's a two week tour? It, 10 days. 10 days. And okay. then we have uh, the four day extension south. Okay. So it can be two weeks. Okay. It can be two weeks. Right? Uh -huh. So, what's the most exciting part about doing one of these tours? Um, I think there's lots of exciting things. Like I said, watching the pe watching um, the, people. the people driving into Cuenca, you literally do see a sparkle. And I think uh, when they see the beach for the first time, like mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. visiting the condo that we're in right now, yeah. they just, wow, it's, it's mind-blowing. Because Ecuador is so beautiful, so diverse. Yeah. Um, last night they were, or the night before, we were in the cloud forest, and now here we are in a very beautiful beach setting. Sure. So I think just the excitement of people realizing how diverse Ecuador is okay. and how friendly Ecuador is. Do you, I wonder how many people actually do your tour and then actually end up moving here. I, I, probably a pretty uh, high percentage or is it fair to say a high percentage or what would you say, John? Well, it's actually a hard question mm -hmm. to answer mm -hmm. because a lot of people are doing this maybe three or four or even more years before retiring. But I would say 95% of the people say we're definitely doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know I have, I'm sure, close to a thousand people who have moved to Ecuador, um, still here, some have moved back, yeah. but um, I would say everybody loves Ecuador. Yeah. So as far as your crowd, your, your customer base, do you have more couples that come as opposed to single people or is it the other way around or what mixer? Again, it's, it's kind of weird because uh, sometimes we'll have groups that are just all singles. Yeah. And then other times, like this group right now, it's almost all couples. Mm -hmm. um, you just never know. You never know, but it's weird how it happens to be all singles or sure. or couples. So 
So now anybody that's watching this video and they they want information, can they email you questions or? Of course. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. And all that's going to be in the description. All um, that information. People sometimes are people writing to us a couple years ahead of time already booking. Okay. And then um, I like to say that once you've done our tour and you're living here or you go back to the states or Canada. We're happy to continue answering all your questions. So sure. it's you're actually tapping in a lot. Of, I've, heard, I've heard lots of expats say that you're tapping into a network because uh, we're all friends before and we're great friends afterwards. Yeah. You'll have us as the main guides, which there's like five or six of us, and then you know a couple hundred uh, expats have moved here, and everybody's wanting to help everybody else. So it's yeah. a network. Okay. Now uh, one last question: How do they pay for this? Do they pay? Is it is like is it cash on delivery or do they have to pay up front or do they pay when they get here or how is that normally handled? Um, generally, you can pay a fifty percent deposit on the web page okay. um, through a credit card through mm -hmm. PayPal, yeah. um, but you can also um, if you have other ways you want to pay. Um, I, I give bank uh, bank deposits, Zelly. Yeah. And um, if you want to pay the remaining portion in cash, we can take cash here in Ecuador. Or if I get it all the way, um, you can pay before. So, okay. but generally we do require a deposit. Okay. Because we're putting down money on the hotels and everything else. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. So now on a more personal level, how did you get into this? Okay. Well, I was actually born and raised in Ecuador, okay. and my dad's a, a volcanologist. You know, Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, the volcanoes. So yeah. Ecuador has you know lots of active volcanoes, and growing up as a kid. Um, we always, you know, go, go to see road cuts, never mm -hmm. to the beach. And over the, just growing up, I just explored Ecuador with my dad and my mom. I liked to hitchhike when I was a kid, just throughout the country, wherever, yeah. wherever the cars took me. And um, I always knew as a kid that my, my calling in life, what I really wanted to do in life was uh, show Ecuador to people. Mm -hmm. So I had, like I said, I had my travel agency for about 24 years. And... Um, I just love traveling in Ecuador and showing whatever people want to see. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Where is home for you? Is it Quito? Qui yeah. Quito. Okay. Outskirts, Tumbaco. Yeah. T yeah. Tumbaco. 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 Yeah, okay. that's between Quito and the airport. Okay. All yeah. right. Uh -huh. um, okay. Well, I can't think of anything else. I'm, I'm sure people are going to write and Great. start asking awesome. questions and everything. Cool. And I certainly appreciate you taking the time to sit with me. I know you're busy today. Yeah. so. Because uh, you're actually doing a tour right now, and I'm uh -huh. going to try to get some footage here in a few minutes okay. uh, of your crowd. So, okay. well, thank thanks, you, Don. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it's a pleasure. And Ecuador is an awesome place. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming, also, Don. Okay, thank and you. Enjoying. All right, ciao. Yeah, ciao. So that's it. That was that was my interview for today. I'm excited about this. I think that there's a lot of people in the world that want to come and explore. Ecuador and see what this country is like. It's a beautiful country. And the thing is, folks, this country is not even bigger than the state of Arizona. And when you start with in Quito on one of these tours with Jonathan, you, you go Quito to Cotacoxi, Cotacachi, down to Monta, to Salinas, through Guayaquil. You get to go to Loja, Vilcabamba, Coenca. You get to see the major sights and attractions about living that come with living in this country. And to, speaking about the birds, you know, there's, it's no secret, as you see from his website, there's like 1,700 species of birds here, you know, in a country that's the size of Colorado. That's another thing that I really encourage you to look into. If you think you, if you're going to come here and do this tour, you might want to figure out how you can also do the birding tour, too. But anyway, that was my interview. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, subscribe please. It helps a lot. If you don't like it, you can do the thumbs down and you know how I feel about that. So until the next time, ciao, ciao.